Hello there, I'm Scotty. You're not welcome back to Remakeathon, and today it's Flubber! Well, I should say this time it's Flubber! That's right, Flubber from 1997, starring Robin Williams, Marsha Gay, Harden, Shooter McGavin himself, Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald? Something, not Michael McDonald. Everybody has a go. Christopher McDonald. Quinn Quinton. Uh, um, hold on a minute. My head. Fuck. Sharp pain in my head. Uh, blame it on. Ted Levine. In Clancy Brown. I couldn't think while that pain was shooting through my head. I couldn't think. Ah, Alright. So, this movie is a remake of the 1961 Disney classic. Classic, because I've only seen bits and pieces of it. The Absent Minded Professor. Starring the late, great Fred McMurray, who I know from My Three Sons. Yes. And they also like great Keenan Wynn, who played the villain in the original Alonzo Hawk, which means that this takes place in the same universe as Herbie, as the Herbie movies, because he also played Alonzo Hawk in Herbie Rides Again. I'm pretty sure that it was a recurring villain. Was. No. I thought he was a villain in. Escape not, but no, it was a different one. Christopher Lee in the second one. Yeah. And uh yeah, so the own there's no the only cameo we get from the original is the actress who was a love interest, and I can even tell you where she was in this. Uh and I was like, Well how come they, they can get anyone else? Well Fred McMurray and Lonzo Hawk and Lonzo Hawk. Fred McMurray and Keenan Wynn have both passed away with Keenan Wynn passing away in the 70s, Fred McMurray passing away six years earlier in 1991. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's why neither of them were in there. They could have gotten Tommy Kirk because he played the spoiled son of Alonzo Hawk, Biff Hawk, in the original. And in this, in this one, the spoiled rich son of the, of the Alonzo Hawk-like character is played by Hood Wheaton. Shut up, Wesley! Yes, you kind of want to tell him that throughout each one. Shut up, Wesley! <clears throat> but, uh, even though I prefer the original series over the next generation, shoot me. I do. Something about Shatner that makes it work. <clears throat> but anyway, that's probably why I haven't reviewed any of the next generation movies. I know I gotta get on those. That's another thing. Maybe I'll do those after this. Who knows? Anyway, so this this movie before follows Professor Philip Brainerd, Ned Brainerd in the original. Why they changed the first name, I don't know. But yeah, played by Robin Williams. And even though this is just called Flubber, not the absent-minded professor, there is a lot of focus on him being absent-minded. He's so absent-minded in fact that he misses his own damn wedding. Yes, to create the said flubber. And I can see I can see why they changed the name. Cause like this is the nineties. We need to adhere to the nineties audience. So calling it flubber and then showing the trailer with a bunch of the flubber stuff. Because there is a part in the middle of this film, maybe not in the middle, but at one point he tells Weebo, voiced by Jody Benson, that's right, Ariel from The Little Mermaid. To make sure that Flubber does not get out while he is away doing testing. At this point, he's at a basketball game, I think. I think. And maybe it's before the basketball game, whatever. He was out doing stuff. And during this, we have a whole dance party with the Flubber. And this feels like you have to put a scene in here that we could put in the trailer because this was all over the trailers the flubber dancing and moving around and all that stuff and 
that was a big focus of the trailers back in the day, and it's this one scene. And I, I, watching this, I still, even after watching it, I don't understand why Flubber has to be sentient. I'm not sure if it was in the original, but why does it have to be sentient? Why is it able to move on its own? It's a, it's a compound. It's a way he made it. I don't know. I don't know. Then again, Weebo was also sentient and has a, is in love with Brainerd, which doesn't really make any sense other than they needed it. Because otherwise, she would have kept remind. She would have remind. If she wasn't in love with him, she would have reminded him about the, the wedding, and he would admit it at the beginning. But instead, she's in love with him, and she. She purposely does not remind him about the wedding. Yeah. Then we have our villain, Shooter McGavin himself, by Christopher McDonald. He plays Wilson. Uh. Yeah, and you know he's the villain because he states it right away. He, right, right in front of him, right to his face, to Brandon's face, states that he's his plan is to steal his fiance away from him. Not very blunt. So there's a bunch of plots in this. There's, he's trying to make this, make something that will save the college, right? Then he's trying to get Sarah back, his fiance. That's, that's two separate plots, really. They kind of intersect. Shooter McGavin's trying to, to get Sarah to be... To take take Sarah away from Brainerd. The head college guy and his son, Shut Up Wesley, are, want revenge because um, Brandon was the only teacher with balls to flunk Wesley. Yes, I'm just going to call him Wesley. To flunk Wesley... Because everyone else is basically paid off, and Brainerd says, and no, I'll screw that. I'm gonna, you know, hmm. give him the justified grave. So he flunked him, so he can't play basketball. So there's that. And then eventually, there is Sarah and Brainerd work together for a plan to get the flubber back that was stolen by the thugs. Speaking of thugs, the two thugs in this are Clancy Brown and Ted Levine. Now, let me show you our villain. Okay, our villain, the head of the college, Wesley's father, this is a representation of him. He is plain white paper. He is boring, he is dull, and not very inspiring. He's just a boring businessman who ends up wanting fluff. Who wants at first to get revenge for his son, and now is just wants Flubber to make money, make money off of it. Yeah. And in my opinion, if they had tried to bring back the character of Alonzo Hawk, I think Ted Levine would have been a great choice. He could have done it. Give him a fake mustache and some hair to the side. He he could have been great. It would have been a little kooky, but. I think he could have been great. I'll just give him a mustache. You know? I think he would have worked. You know? Ted Levine with a mustache has been in a lot of movies. He had a mustache in The Fast and the Furious. So. But, no, we have plain white paper as our villain. Yeah. We had some funny moments. Stuff that was all in the trailer. Like, he goes to show Sarah how Flubber works by putting a piece of it in his back pocket. Why didn't he shove it in his underwear? And then he goes to fall out the window, but the floor shoots out the back pocket. And he crashes. Which, you know, basically, Sarah tells him to fuck off, basically. Yeah. And then there's the whole, in the basketball thing, we, bas in the, the basketball gym, in the gym, but he's throwing it around, it's bouncing, and his house when it's bouncing around. All, everything was in a trailer, all that spots. Uh, a moment taken from the original film, because I know that because it's on the cover, the original film is The Flying Car. And they do it here, him in The Flying Car. As you apparently putting Flubber in the, into the carburetor makes it fly for some reason. It's better than what? 
they would, but they would have done it. You know. It's all about bouncing, right? So put some of it on the tires and have it bounce around. You know. They're like his line. I'll never have to get new tires again. Robin Williams. Let's talk about Robin Williams. All right, this man is one funny man. But in this movie... I think it was getting to the point. Robin Williams' career was starting to dwindle down. This may have been the first of the movies he was doing. It was just like, like there was after a while, movies like Death to Smoochie or Toys. They kind of went the opposite way in his career. I think his last good movie before this was Jumanji in 1995. I think that was the last good one, really. It's a good one. I think I was trying to do the... Oh, I don't work with the males because I used to be one. That one that he does. Because I used to be one. Starfire is good, too. But, like, I... I, I never watched that, that the Smoochie, but I heard it's not one of his best. And then there's Toys, which I tried to watch as a kid, and couldn't get into it. Then again, maybe as an adult I get into it, you know, better. Jack is another good one. I should, it's a lot of these movies I have reviewed. But anyway, uh, so yeah, it ends up that he, he confesses the truth, sort of, to Weibo about how he says the reason he's absent-minded is not because he's selfish or anything like that, it's because he's in love with Sarah, which... No, that doesn't track. That... What? If he was in love with Sarah, why did he forget about their wedding? Why would he just do that? I, I don't know. But... We both flies over... to Sarah's house and shows her the footage, because she recorded it. By the way, We both was another excuse to have a bunch of you know, footage reactions. You know how, like, Bumblebee and Transformers, she talks through the radio? Well, she doesn't necessarily talk with it. She shows clips from movies and stuff while also saying words. Mostly Disney movies, because, hello. But, yeah, so Sarah gets back together with... Him. Oh, there was a joke that they, they made me go... It was the eye roller. I went, ha, 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 ha. And it's when Shooter McGavin takes Sarah out on a date and they're like on, under his porch or something. And he's like, well, it's nice for us to have some time together alone without uh, Brainerd hovering over us. And the camera pans up to him in the flying car, literally hovering above the house. And I went, ha, 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 ha. Knee slapper there. Oh, that's hard. Sorry, sorry. Uh, but what? It, will you t stop it! What's wrong with you? Well, it's okay. So, anyway, control. So, anyway, so anyway. Brainerd comes up with an idea after the goons. So there's a scene with the goons where they're trying to break in and the flubber keeps hitting him, knocking him out by accident because he's testing the flubber upstairs. So every time, you know, he, he threw a golf ball out, it flies up, hits someone in the head. There's a uh, bowling ball flies up, hits him in the head. They're not dead for some reason. And then, uh, okay. We need to get out of here and make room for it. And he sprayed some of it out onto the floor. So when they go to run out, they hit it and they bounce up in the air. Yeah, but they could eventually come back and they steal the flubber and they destroy Weebo. I did, I did kind of laugh that when they come back, when he and Sarah come back, uh, Weber, the house cleaning robot, is just cleaning everything up. Like, he just, like, what happens, like, he's not as sentient as Weebo. So it's like, he comes, they come back and he's just... Okay, that, that that's kind of funny. So I realized what happened, and they 
So they're gonna sell to base you know they have on their shoes and they're able to Oh oh by the way this is the reveal that Shooter McGavin isn't on it. No shit. He told us he was the villain. But uh Yeah, they're able to you know get the flubber back, save the day, and find out that we Bo backed up herself on a hard drive or something, but it's not exactly her. She changed some of the traits. And now it's like a teenage girl. I don't understand why they had to change her. Like, oh, she got rid of some of her flaws and added some of him. So then why isn't this thing, why is this thing talking like a teenage girl? Why isn't it talking like a, a, a Robin Williams? Why does she just back herself up? I don't, I don't understand. It's red now. But I don't understand why it's why it had to be changed. Why couldn't it just be Weibo 2.0 or something? It's called We Bet now. I don't know. By the way, it's time for the wedding. He's still not there, but they do it over a video screen. Because for some reason his experiments are too... Look, I have a complaint to make too about the beginning of this. They're at work on the day of their wedding because they're sitting there and they're having lunch. And Edie McClurg here, you know, he's a righteous dude. She's sitting there and she goes, oh, your wedding. Wedding. Oh, yes, the wedding. It's today. Why the f will you be working on the day of your wedding? Why? People take days off for their weddings. Why are you... I mean, do you understand how long it takes to get the wedding together? There's no way they'd still be working from, even if you're having it later that night, right? If you're having it, say, 5 o'clock. Still, from that morning, everything is being set up. Now, I've never gotten married and never will. Knock on wood. That's not wood. Hold on. Knock on wood. But, I'll say probably never will. I've never gotten married. But I've seen enough movies about weddings. And I've been to enough weddings to know that when they are setting that shit up, it is like dawn that they are setting the stuff up to get everything ready to go. There's no way those two would be at work at a college on the day of their wedding. And it's not like, oh, maybe it's just a thing. They get together. No, there are family people there. Shooter McGavin is there for some reason. And like they go through a whole school day before the wedding happens that night. That that would it wouldn't happen that way. It just doesn't make any sense. And then at the end, he's still not at the wedding. He's through a video screen because he's inventing something else. And I don't know. It's the middle of the road. It's the middle of the road. This has never been one of my favorites. Even from the first time I watched it back in the nineties, I was just like, "There's something off with this movie." Now as an adult, I can tell you it did something off with the whole thing. It's just, I don't know. Even some of the plot, when they introduced the Wesley plot of, oh, he, he failed me and, and you're my dad and all the other teachers, they kiss your ass and give me A's, but he won't. And I'm like, that is such a 60s plot line. It is. It's taken straight out of the original film. And it's the only thing that really makes makes it feel like it was you know that it was from a 60s movie it's that it's just like i don't know but uh what are your thoughts on flubber let me know comments let me should like share subscribe thank you for watching i'm scotty well it's time to do a, a recent remake from 2018 of a movie from the 70s starring Charles Bronson. This one stars Bruce Willis. That's right. You figure it out. Who knows what that one's next? Uh, so, thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.